احمد هو نصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حامين بالكتاب المبين انا جعلناه قرانا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون وانه في ام الكتاب لدينا لعلي حكيم وقال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سوره الواقعه انه لقران كريم في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه الا المطهرون تنزيل من رب العالمين وقال عز وجل كما ورد في سوره القيامه لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به ان علينا جمعه وقرانه فاذا قراناه فاتبع قرانه ثم ان علينا بيانه صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى آمين يا رب العالمين يا برادرز اند سسترز ان اسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته with the name of Allah and invoking his blessings and help we are starting our month long program of a rapid translation of the whole of the Quran and a brief explanation along with as i told you couple of days before in my sunday lecture was this place we shall be holding inshallah four sessions of one hour each every night for today the first hour i am taking i'll try in half an hour to finish with some introduction some basic and fundamental facts and figures about quran e hakim and then about half an hour for surah al fatiha and then in the second hour inshallah we shall start with surah al baqarah about quran first of all we all believe that quran is the word of allah al quran al kalam allah is the speech of allah word of allah and it is protected and preserved its protection and preservation is guaranteed by allah himself number 2 the real and original quran is with allah what we have in our hands is so to say the tested copy of that real quran that real quran is in lahi mahfuz bal huwa quranun majidun fi lahi mahfuz at another place as i have recited the ayat from surah al waqiah fi kitab maknun the hidden book this is quran e kareem and it is in the hidden book fi kitab maknun la yamassuhu illa al mutahharun and from there it was sent down to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so actually the real quran is there that is why i have recited the first four ayat of surah al zukhruf Hamim wal Kitab al Mubin. By this book, which is very clear, it is expressive of all its meanings. Inna jalnahu Quran al Arabi al Lalakum taqilun, and we have made it a Quran in Arabic language, so that you can understand. And here, actually, the addressees are the Arabs. who were the first addressees of quran i'll discuss this point later on inshallah wa innahu fi umm al kitab ladaina ala aliy al hakim and this quran is in the mother of the books umm al kitab the real mother book ladaina it is with us al aliy al hakim and this book is exalted and full of wisdom so the real quran is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala في لوح محفوظ في كتاب مكنون في ام الكتاب لدينا 
and these are actually the attested copies of the Quran that is in Lahe Mahfuz. From there it was sent down and this coming down of the Quran was in two stages. Number one, in one night round about the year 610 of the Christian era, one night of the month of Ramadan, that is Laylatul Qadr, the whole of the Quran from the Lahe Mahfuz and from the Ummul Kitab as I have told you, it was sent down to the first heaven, actually the lowest heaven from the divine side, but from our side is the first heaven. The whole of this Quran was sent in that night, Laylatul Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khairun min al-fishar. Tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi'izni rabbihim min kulli amr. Salamun hiya hatta matla'i fajr. And this Laylatul Qadr was in the month of Ramadan. That is why we have just listened in the prayer also, in the first rakat of Surat of Salatul Isha, this Shahr Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, hudan lil-nasi wa bayyinati min al-huda wa al-furqan. For this first coming down of the Quran, the verb that is used in Quran is anzalna. Anzala yunzilo inzalan. Because this means one piece, suddenly sending down something, something at one time, one piece. So the whole of the Quran was sent down from that law mahfuz from that kitab um matloon, from that ummil kitab to the first heaven. Now that is second stage was that from there it was sent down to the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa through Archangel Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And it was bit by bit, ayah by ayah, surah by surah. And it took 22 long years in the complete revelation of the Quran to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? We all believe he was the last prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here I want to mention, he was from the progeny of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam through Ismail alayhi salatu wa sallam. And you know the history of Quraysh that was that belonged to the progeny of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salatu wa sallam. And they were settled, you know, being Ummul Qura that is Bakka al mukarramah So there actually, that is the place where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was born in the year 571 of Christian era. And when he was around about 40 years, this revelation started to him in Ghare Hira, in the cave of Hira. And that was the year 610, as far as we can assess and we can know. Now during these 22 years of the revelation of Quran, for about 12 years, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed at Makkah. So the amount of Quran that was revealed during this period is called the Makki Quran, the surahs, Makki surahs. And it is round about two-thirds of the whole of the Quran. Then he migrated in the year 624, 622 to Madinah Munawwara. And from thence till his death in 632, that is 10 years he stayed at Medina. But during these 10 years, he was making journeys for battles also. For you, you know, battle of Badr. Then he had to go even to Tabuk, that is near the border of Syria. He had to go to different parts of the Arabian desert. So actually during this whole period of 10 years, the surahs and ayat of Quran which were revealed to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are called the Madani surahs. Although all of them were not revealed at Medina properly. Some of them were revealed in different places where he was on journey. But you know all that part of the Quran which was revealed during 10 years after Hijrah until his death. This is called the Madani Surahs or the Madani Quran. Now this division between Madani and Makki Surahs of Quran is nearly agreed upon about most of the surahs, it is agreed upon whether it is Bakki or Madani. But there are slight differences of opinion about a few surahs and then about a certain ayat also. There are examples that some ayat were revealed at Makkah, but they, were, they are included in the Madani surahs. 
اور سب آیات ور ریویل ایٹ مدینہ بٹ دے آر انکلوڈیڈ ان دی بٹ سورات بٹ ایز آئی ٹول یو بائی اینڈ لارج اٹ از ایگریڈ اپان بٹوین آل دی مسلم اینڈ اسکالرس دیٹ دس از اے مکی سورا اینڈ دس از اے مدنی سورا اینڈ ایگزامپل آف این امپارٹنٹ ایکسیپشن از سورت الحج اکارڈنگ ٹو سم پیپل اٹ از مکی اکارڈنگ ٹو ادرس اٹ از مدنی and as far as i have, have been able to understand part of it is madani part of it is makki and some ayat i found it later on that it was the opinion of hazrat abdullah ibn abbas of the allah taala anhuma that some ayat were revealed during the journey that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam undertook during his during his hijra when he was going from makka to madina during this period those ayat were revealed So this surah, so to say we can call, it is somewhere between Madani and Makki, Surah Al-Hajj. About the rest of the surahs, as I have told you, really there is consensus, there is agreement of opinion about whether they are Makkis or Madanis. Now, fifth point is, who were the addressees of the Quran? Whom Quran addressed? I want to divide this into two parts. The first and foremost addressees of the Quran, they were the pagan Arabs who were the progeny of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. And Quran gives them the title of Ummiyyin because they didn't have any book. There was no prophet sent to this progeny of Ibrahim after Ismail alayhi salatu was salam. So these people, you know, they were unlettered one. They had no education. They had no book, no law, no traditions. So they were called Ummiyyin. Huwa allazhi baasa fil Ummiyyin rasoolam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yudakkihim wa yuallimuhumul kitab wal hikmah. But secondly, the addressees of the Quran were the Jews and the Christians. So to say, they were the former Muslim Ummah. They were the Ummah of Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. They were people of the book. All of them believed in Torah. And the Jews, you know, Although they didn't believe in 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 Jeel, but they did believe in Torah, in the Old Testament, and all the scriptures of the prophets. So actually, they are called Ahlul Kitab, people of the book, and they have been addressed to in the Quran directly, and they were also the direct addressees of the Quran because many Jews were there in the Arabian Peninsula, and then you know Christians were also present in the Arabian Peninsula. To these people, Quran addresses primarily, but secondarily, whole of humanity is the addressee of the Quran. All the people, all human beings who were present in this world at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Quran addressed them also. Ya Yuhannas, O people at large, Ya Bani Adam, O progeny of Adam. So actually, the whole of humanity was being addressed. And not only those people who were present at the time of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but also all human beings who had to come to this world till the end of this world, till the doomsday. But they are being addressed, and they are the addressees. We may say they are by proxy. To them, this message has to be given and communicated by the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the direct, you know. approach of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he addressed directly himself the pagan arabs of the arabian peninsula and the jews and the christians of his time the rest of the humanity actually this was this you know vision was entrusted to the umma of the muslim uh, of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that now it's the own duty to preach and convey and, con- and communicate this message of allah subhanahu wa taala to each and every human being till the end of this world